Hello! Today's stories come from r slash Entitled People. We've got two stories of some pretty incomprehensible entitlement today. Our first originally started in Am I the Butthole, but evolved well beyond that after multiple updates. User Mr. Hex from r slash Best of Redditor Updates has curated the following for us today. The Wedding Photos Saga. I'm not really a photographer. I'm a dog groomer. I take lots of photos of dogs all day to put on my Facebook and Instagram. It's my thing, if that makes sense. A cut and a photo with every appointment. I very seldom shoot things other than dogs, even if I have a nice setup. A friend got married a few days ago and wanting to save money, asked if I'd shoot it for them. I told him it's not really my forte, but he convinced me by saying he didn't care if they were perfect. They were on a shoestring budget and I agreed to shoot it for $250, which is nothing for a 10-hour event. On the day of, I'm driving around following the bride as she goes from appointment to appointment before the ceremony, taking photos along the way. I shoot the ceremony itself and during the reception, I'm shooting speeches and people mingling. I started around 11 a.m. and was due to finish around 7.30 p.m. Around 5 p.m., food is being served and I was told I cannot stop to eat because I need to be photographer. In fact, they didn't save me a spot at any table. I'm getting tired and at this point, kind of regretting doing this for next to nothing. It's also unbelievably hot. The venue is in an old Veterans Legion and it's like 110 Fahrenheit and there's no AC. I told the groom, I need to take off for 20 minutes to get something to eat and drink. There's no open bar or anything. I can't even get water and my two water bottles are long empty. He tells me I need to either be photographer or leave without pay. With the heat, being hungry, being generally annoyed at the circumstances, I asked if he was sure and he said yes. So I deleted all the photos I took in front of him and took off saying I'm not his photographer anymore. If I was to be paid $250, honestly, at that point, I would have paid $250 just for a glass of cold water and somewhere to sit for five minutes. Was I the butthole? They went right on their honeymoon and they've all been off of social media, but a lot of people have been posting on their wall asking about photos with zero responses. Update. I previously made a post you can find here and want to provide an update. This is a throwaway account, so I'm sorry for not replying to every DM, but I hope this answers many of the questions people had. Immediately after the wedding, they went off for their honeymoon. They went to a cottage up north and didn't use social media for a week. In that time, they got lots of requests for photos on Facebook, and I didn't reply to anyone because to me, this was done and I didn't want the headache of dealing with the fallback. I don't know a lot of these people. It's their circle of friends, so I thought it was best they handled it. The bride contacted me when they returned and asked me my side of the story. I don't know when the groom spilled the beans, but he wasn't truthful about it. He told her I had camera problems and lost the photos. I told her plainly what happened and told her that while I felt guilty, it's no way to treat someone doing them a favor. She wasn't in the know about any of this and asked if there was any way we could mend this. We got to talking and I've agreed to do a reshoot for some photos later in the season. She wants some photos of just them in an outdoor shoot photos of the rings, some artsy-fartsy shots, and that's it. So she offered me the original $250 and I agreed under the condition I bail at word one of crap from either of them. As for the original photos, I offered to bring my SD card to a place that could attempt to recover them, but at their cost, and she declined. Word did get out on social media about some of this and we agreed to sweep it under the rug and try to diffuse or play down what happened. Of the few comments I did read, they were wholly against me because the story is twisted with the her camera died narrative the groom spun. I'm upset, but not enough to make a big deal of it. None of them even know my name. I did make two interesting connections, though. The DJ was privy to the situation. He was the person I vented to originally, and he asked if I'd shoot their band at an upcoming event. Additionally, the minister asked if I'd like to shoot some promotional images of his church and choir. Not sure if I'm cut out for anything but pet stuff, but it's nice to have got something out of this ordeal at least. Final update. This is my third and final post on the matter. I wanted to make a final update to my post you can find here. According to Am I the Butthole Rules, I am not allowed to post another update, so I've instead put it on my profile. A common sentiment in the previous thread was I was a doormat, and I know that, but if I can justify it just one time, this was never about the money or the people or anything. I'm experienced with photography, but only really in one subject area pet portraits. And I would gladly jump at any opportunity to practice and gain more experience and exposure in other areas of photography. It's extremely validating going from volunteer work to paid work, even if the pay is a small pittance to what it should be. Even if they offered me nothing, 
I would have gladly accepted the opportunity just so I can practice more and try new things. Plus, it was under the assumption they didn't care they were perfect photos. I got the bride to correct the record on Facebook that there was a disagreement between her husband and I. I don't know if anyone has connected the dots yet to an article or articles they might have read, but a lot of people were upset and actually taking my side for once. The bride said we all worked it out, which sort of happened, and we'll have some photos to post soon. For my update, I bailed on the shoot. It was meant to be later in November so they could have snowy photos, but a few nights ago they asked if I could do it the day before yesterday. I wasn't doing anything, so I agreed. I picked out a location I thought was nice, as there's lots of wineries and vineyards in our area, plus it was relatively close to me. I meet them there, and they're both prettied up and ready to go. We congregate around my car while I'm unloading my lights and gear bag, and I talk about how the shoot is going to go. I laid out the specific shots I was going to take, then where the lights would be, their poses, etc. I asked the husband if he could help me carry sandbags and he declined, saying my job is photographer, not him. Something in me snapped, and I just started loading my stuff up again and got into my car despite their protests. I remarked that when they both get married a second time, don't contact me to shoot it. Rolled my windows up, locked my doors, and off I went. The first thing I did when I got home was block everyone. Their relationship was already threadbare, but this just cemented them as awful people I'd do best to not associate with. All told, my investment in this shoot was maybe 30 minutes, making a game plan on what shots and what to bring, and a five-minute drive each way. That is if you don't count my previous day wasted. At the very least, I find solace I wasted their time and money on makeup, etc., if even a little. As well, I'm learning I'm really not cut out for this stuff. I need more experience, in particular dealing with clients, before I take on this kind of work, because I'm quickly learning I am hating this aspect of it. As an aside, I don't like many of the people here on Reddit, either publicly or through DMs, as well some YouTubers who have covered my post, who try to gatekeep photography. Makes me very sad to read things like I'm not a real photographer. While it's true I'm not super experienced, these kind of comments really dig deep when I'm doing my best and trying to learn more about photography. I've been using a digital SLR for about 10 years, photographing pets and some small events along the way. Nothing as prestigious as shooting weddings, sure, but just because someone doesn't shoot photos professionally doesn't mean they're default a bad photographer. Whew, I'm so glad this is an entitled person post. It would be super tough to render a verdict on this one. I love photography and photos in general, so the thought of content being deleted makes me squeamish. I will touch on the photographer's final comment, though. While there is definitely a distinction that can be made between trained and untrained artists, at the end of the day, that doesn't necessarily correlate with quality. I wish people were more open to appreciating art and beauty in all its forms. On a lighter note, let's check out some of the funniest comments. Someone said, I don't think I would have had the balls to delete the photos, but I would have stopped shooting and went home and held the photos hostage until they paid me. But good for the photographer for bailing that second time. Tyler Edis replied, I've had to recover photos from a card before, and I did it myself for free. It's kind of telling that the bride didn't even care to have the photos of the event. The Flying Sheeps added, Yeah, seriously, photographers are expensive. The guy should have been worshipping the photographer for agreeing to do it for $250. Food is also provided to vendors. It's standard. PM me your headstone said, This sounds like a marriage that will last two years tops. Someone replied, not gonna lie, surprised it lasted through the update. Wonder Electrical had this to share. Photographer agrees under the condition that they bail at word one of crap. Husband says word one of crap. Photographer bails. Husband shocked Pikachu face. Our second story is another transplant from Am I the Butthole with a wedding theme but more comedic flair. My half-sister wanted to show up in a wedding dress to my engagement party. So I changed the party theme so she would fit right in. Edit. I don't care if you are from Fox or Board Panda or BuzzFeed or whatever paper. No, I won't give you an exclusive interview. This is not even newsworthy. What the frack kind of journalism is that supposed to be? My half-sister Heather and I never really got along. We both are 24. My father left my mother for her mother, and we were born the same month, 20 days apart. It has always been weird. It doesn't help that Heather's mom hates me and my mom. By extension, Heather and I didn't have the best relationship. She has always tried to one-up me, even though we both have a similar economic background. I can give examples of this, but for the sake of the word limit, won't write them here. So my fiancé and I got engaged last month and had our engagement party this Saturday. We had planned it originally as a casual formal event. Nice dresses, but not, 
I am going to the Met Gala ball nice. More like, we are going to a good restaurant nice. Anyway, my cousin hits me up saying she has to show me something. It was the picture of the dress Heather was going to wear. Edit. This is what the dress looked like approximately. It was a bit shorter and a bit less puffy. The rest is almost identical. This dress, Jeebus, it can only be described as opulent. It was long and white, strapless, with sewn-in crystals and golden accents. I'm pretty sure it's a wedding dress, but I can't be 100%. This made me really mad. So I decided, frack that. I started texting people, telling them that there had been a change of plans, and that instead of casual formal, I decided to make it a costume party. My mother's side is crazy for Halloween, so they were immediately on board. I told my father via text and asked for him to relay the message to Heather and her mother, knowing full well that he would forget or leave it to the last minute. Saturday comes along, guests start showing up, most of them in costumes. Some didn't have time to get one. We just provided them with fun hats and cheap wigs. Heather, my dad, and her mother come like one hour late. As soon as she notices that everyone was either wearing elaborate costumes or weird accessories and she didn't stand out, she lost it especially when my fiancé came along and told her that her bride dress looked amazing for a cheap costume. (laughs) She left crying, and her mother and my father told me that I was being childish, and I could have told Heather myself, and not have tasked my father. For those interested, my fiancé was dressed as Bubbles, and I was dressed as Mojo Jojo. My mom and aunts went as Abba. Other memorable costumes were Luffy and Zorro, Ian Malcolm and John Hammond, and Jesus. Edit. So why did I invite her? It's one of those weird family situations where not inviting them would have been more dramatic. You know, when you try pleasing everyone. Plus, I still wanted a relationship with my father, so not inviting Heather and her mom would have made things super difficult and made it so my father would have had to choose. When I kept thinking of it, I noticed that my father wouldn't have chosen me on this scenario, which is why I ended up cutting them off. You let her win. No, the point of this is to ruin my half-sister's intention. She wasn't just dressed nicely, as some of you put it. She wore a wedding dress to my engagement party. I'd much rather subvert this whole mess rather than have her smugly sitting at the table with her wedding dress. Also, some of you are really hung up on the cheap wigs part and ignore literally everything else regarding the party. A minority of our guests wore those cheap wigs. Also, it literally doesn't matter. We had a blast. After she left, I didn't even think of her again till a few days later. I don't regret the costume party. I wish I thought of it earlier, to be honest. This is a karma Jezebeling repost. No, it isn't. I posted this story before on Am I the Butthole? I just had to wait two weeks to post on here. Also, I can't believe I have to say this, but the lady on the picture is not Heather. It's also not the dress she wore. I look for a picture that looked approximately like the dress. Love this. Costume parte. Heather clearly has issues. I'm really not clear why the bride-to-be would receive any flack for any of this on Reddit. I think this is a fantastic example of not taking yourself or others too seriously. She made the best of what could have been a horrible situation. She didn't get melodramatic or whine that it's her day. She simply leveled the playing field in a way that was actually quite brilliant. And I love that the fiancé was totally game. Let's check out the comments for a mini update. Someone said, please tell me they are not invited to your wedding. To me, it sounds like your dad has zero good qualities. OP replied, no, they are not invited anymore and not in my life anymore. Late Nerd said, the cherry on top of this delicious revenge Sunday is how you use your father's general crappiness to work in your favor. Absolutely brilliant. Someone added, especially the rules lawyering aspect of it. What do you mean? I told dad a week ago he was supposed to tell you. And dad knows it's true, so we can only sheepishly say, she did, but that takes wit. Knowing your dad not only will forget, but also that he's honest enough to admit he forgot. Next level. Fearless Sherbert added, Better yet, he was honest enough to admit she should have known he would forget. Legendary self-burn there. In response to, especially when my fiancé came along and told her that her bride dress looked amazing for a cheap costume, Paul from Atlanta said, So he's a keeper. Excellent petty revenge. Scantron added, Best part is he was in a Bubbles costume. Laugh my butt off. Czar asked, like this? If you've enjoyed the story and would like to hear more, consider liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. Thanks, and bye for now.